In this module, I will review the muscle control formula and give another example using concentric MTC action. To begin, let's review the muscle control formula. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. Step three is to identify the type of MTC action either concentric, eccentric, or isometric. In step four, you identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. Step five, identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. And in step six, we identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. Step one is to identify the joint movement or position. To begin, I'd ask you to consider the video on the left. We saw this same video when we looked at an example for eccentric MTC actions. Now let's contrast that with a video on the right. In this video here, we have a rapid downward movement of the arm compared to the slow controlled movement we had on the left. So now we are going to go from position A to position B, but we're going to do so quickly. The action from A to B is a downward rotation of the arm. If we identify the joint motion involved, we see that that would be glenohumeral adduction. And from our perspective, this would be a counterclockwise rotation. Step two is to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position. We want to ask ourselves what movement would the external force produce if there were no active muscles. If we look from A to B fast, we'll see once again gravity wants to downwardly rotate the humerus, in this case a counterclockwise direction. Identifying the effect of the external force, we see once again this would be glenohumeral adduction. And once again, this is in a counterclockwise direction. For step three, we identify the type of MTC action, whether it be concentric, eccentric, or isometric. To assist us in doing so, we will look at a decision flow chart. First, we identify the joint motion and the effect of the external force. Then we ask ourselves a question about what is the movement direction? This is the movement direction in relation to the external force. In other words, how is the joint motion occurring with respect to the external force? Two possible answers we could have is that it could be rotating in the same direction or it could be going in the opposite direction. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in opposite directions, then we would have a concentric MTC action. If the joint motion and the effect of the external force are in the same direction, then we have to determine the movement speed. We do this by asking ourselves the question is, is the joint motion occurring faster or slower than the effect of the external force alone? If the joint motion is faster than the effect of the external force alone, then we would have a concentric MTC action. If on the other hand, the joint motion is slower than the effect of the external resistance alone, then we would conclude that we have an eccentric MTC action. Other possibilities include that we have no movement at all. This would infer that we have an isometric MTC action. Finally, we could have the joint motion going across the direction of the external force. In other words, it's happening in a different plane. If this is the case, we would also have a concentric MTC action. With this understanding in mind, let's return to our example. From here, we are going from A to B fast. The joint motion and the external force are both creating an effect to A deduct the arm. When we identify the MTC action, we will see that both the external force and the joint motion are in the same direction. In this case, we are going faster than the effect of the external force alone, 
so we conclude that we have a concentric MTC action. Step four is to identify the plane of movement and the axis of rotation. Once again, we're going from A to B fast. Once again, this is glenohumeral A deduction. For glenohumeral A deduction, we will see that we have an axis of rotation that is an anterior-posterior axis through the humeral head. An AB and A deduction of the humerus occurs in the frontal plane. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. Returning to our example once again, I am only going to illustrate the MTCs on the medial side of the joint just because they're easier to see. And we see the length of the MTCs on the medial side in position A, and we see the length of the MTCs on the medial side in position B, and we note that they're shorter. So the MTCs that are shortening are the MTCs on the medial side of the joint are the adductors, and the ones that are lengthening are on the lateral side of the joint or the AB ductors, which are not shown in this example. Step six is to identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or the position. As we go from A to B fast, we note that we are going in the same direction as the external force, and therefore we have a concentric MTC. And we note that with concentric MTC actions, the MTCs controlling that action are going to be the MTCs that are shortening. In this case, the MTCs that are shortening are on the medial side of the joint or the glenohumeral adductors. So let's review what we did for this particular example. Step one, we identified the joint movement or position. We identified the joint movement as being glenohumeral adduction. Second, we need to identify the effect of the external force on the joint movement or position, and we determined that the effect of the external force, in this case gravity, was to adduct the arm. Step three was to identify the type of MTC action, whether it was concentric, eccentric, or isometric. In this case, we note that both the joint movement and the effect of the external force are in the same direction, and the movement is faster than that would be produced by the external force alone. Therefore, we conclude that this is going to be a concentric MTC action. Step four identifies the plane of movement in the axis of rotation. And for glenohumeral A deduction, we have a anterior posterior axis that goes through the head of the humerus, and the plane of the movement is in the frontal plane. Step five is to identify on which side of the joint axis the MTCs are lengthening and on which side the MTCs are shortening. We noted that the MTCs on the medial side or the glenohumeral adductors were shortening, while the MTCs on the lateral side or the glenohumeral AB ductors were lengthening. Step six, we put it all together and identify which MTCs must be producing or controlling the movement or position. Since we already identified that we have a concentric MTC action, and we know that for concentric MTC actions, it's the MTCs that are shortening or producing the movement, and since we identified that it was the MTCs on the medial side with the glenohumeral AD ductors that were shortening, we can conclude that it was the glenohumeral AD ductors were controlling glenohumeral AD duction concentrically.